Love is Blind UK just got started. Proposals have happened and the couples are off to Greece, but of course there is already trouble in paradise. Nicole is pissing me off. I'm sorry to come in so hot, but like girl, what the hell are we doing? Y'all know I'm rooting for everybody black, but what I am not rooting for is this blatant ignorance, is ignorance a word? This blatant ignorance of red flags. I was so happy that Jasmine decided to sit down with Nicole and talk to her about Sam. I was like, yes, she's about to pull my girl out of the sunken place. But apparently it was too late because she still said yes to his proposal. Now, Nicole, you had two different people tell you that Sam ain't shit. And you still went and cried in front of his ain't shit ass and said yes to him proposing to you. Are we okay? And that's exactly why she was sitting there looking crazy after he had proposed. They were all happy. She was sitting there. And then this happened. I love you. I think I love you too. I, I can't believe it. Oh, I know. It's, it's, it's magic. Mm. And then she walks into the pod with Benaya to let him down, and he gives her more than her fiancé ever did. Because I do care about you. You are part of, like, my heart. For me, it more so felt like Sam just didn't want to lose. It wasn't about actually loving Nicole and wanting to be with her. When Nicole and Sam meet for the first time outside of the pods, the first thing that Sam says is, It's gonna be okay. As if that was some sort of sigh of relief that she wasn't big, because I guarantee he was still thinking that. Something else that stood out to me about Sam is the fact that over and over and over again, I mean repeatedly, he kept saying, It's gonna work out, just trust me. No, it's gonna be good, trust me. Yeah. I told you to trust me. I just want you to trust me and believe in me. Trust me, okay? That made me not trust him because if I really could trust you, why would you need to repeat it like that? And then he said he doesn't care what anybody thinks. He thinks she's beautiful. I don't care what anyone else thinks. To me, she's freaking gorgeous. What exactly are people thinking? Because no one on this show has seen her. So you have to be talking about your friends or family. I don't know if his family would have accepted the fact that she's black or not, but that's very much what it was giving. He kind of seemed like he was nervous, like, oh shit. Okay, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Don't worry, just trust me as if he was preparing her for this, you know, fallout that was about to happen with his family. Red flag. It was more like he was trying to convince himself and something was just off there. I can't shake the feeling that it was a race thing. I hope that I'm wrong. But then he called her eyes boring brown and I'm just like, okay. Like what? what color are your eyes? Black. Boring brown. <laughs> Why would you ever say that? I really don't know what the hell Nicole was thinking, but at least she came to her senses before the honeymoon. But now she's about to double back to our boy, Benaya. Hey y'all, it's Nay. Welcome back to my little corner of YouTube. This video will contain spoilers for Love is Blind UK episodes three and four. So if you haven't seen them yet and you do not want spoilers, save this video and come back after you do. You are about to hear my thoughts on episodes three and four, but of course I want to hear yours. So feel free to drop a comment below if you do want to participate in the conversation and give this video a like before you go. So I know you enjoyed it. If you want to keep the conversation going after this video, head on over to my Discord. It's a place for us to chit chat outside of YouTube and it's free. So why not? The link is in the description box So shout out to Benaya for airing out Sam. He said I don't know what it is about him But bro is moving funny. I do wonder why he didn't specifically say what Sam said or maybe he did and they cut it out But maybe that's something we're gonna find out later He did his best to warn Nicole and she just didn't want to hear it But as we all know one thing about those tables they turn. So now she wants to meet up with him because she thinks she chose wrong. Now we have seen this result in Marriage That Last. This happened with Zach and Bliss in season four of the US version, I believe that was. And they are happily married. They just had a baby. So it can work. If you pick the wrong person first and then you spin the block and that person says yes, it could work out. So I'm not against it. It just bothers me for how it's going to make that other person feel. It made Bliss feel like a second choice. It's going to make Benaya feel like a second choice. So if he says no, I don't blame him. But if he says yes, I hope they can make it work out. On a side note, production, as always, was petty as hell for zooming in on Nicole's lemon pepper steppers right after she had told Benaya that she was moving on. They, they didn't have to zoom in on them damn shoes like that. So correct me if I'm wrong, but Ali told Demi he didn't think that they needed to have gestures because their love was deeper than gestures. I haven't come in here with extravagant gifts or like ostentatious gestures or anything like that, but I feel like our love is more shit back, real, natural. We don't need these crazy over the top gestures for us to connect. Now I don't get any other weird vibes from Ali, but when someone says something like that, I always find it odd. Maybe it's because one of my love languages is receiving gifts, but I think it's weird for someone to be like, I don't need to show you how much I love you by giving you things. You already know, like that's that's kind of weird. Now Demi says she agrees with him, but I don't know that she actually does. Didn't she give him a whole specially made birthday card for his birthday? She ain't even know this man yet. So I think gestures are important to her and I hope she actually tells Ali that but instead of pretending that it doesn't matter. Now Demi tells Ali that she has endometriosis, which I don't think is becoming more common. I think that more women are actually being diagnosed with it, which is great because historically doctors have not listened. I know three women 
possibly four in my own personal life who have either had endo or ando. And they suffered for years undiagnosed because doctors just didn't listen to stuff like that. And not to get on my soapbox, but let me get on my soapbox. Women's pain when it comes to the reproductive system overall is neither known specifically by men nor believed. We're told that pain from cramps is just in our heads. We just need to get over it, take some medicine, whatever. Men as a collective don't really know what women's bodies go through reproductively. I'm talking from periods to being pregnant to having children to postpartum. It's not just a period. It's not just having a baby. It's so much more and a lot of women suffer because people don't believe that our pain is real. And unfortunately that happens even more with black women. There are schools right now today in 2024 that teach that black women genetically have a higher pain tolerance. And that is why when black women go to have babies and they're said, hey, I'm not feeling great, this doesn't feel great. That's why they're more likely to die during childbirth because no one listens to them when they say that something is not right because they believe that black women literally cannot feel pain. That is a real thing, like go look into that. And these are doctors who think this, by the way, but I digress. We do have a couple of celebrities this season. We have Ali showing up as Drake. We have Tom showing up as the British Justin Timberlake. Now Tom is another person in a love triangle. Is this a better triangle? Yeah, I did that. That's like a Delta. Is that a Delta? I don't know. I'm not in a sorority. But Tom was vibing with both Natasha and Maria. But then he friends on Natasha, which happens to the best of us. But I don't think she's ready to let that go. She was really hurt about it and she says she doesn't think that this is the end of their story. But we'll be seeing her again. I knew we were going to see her again even before they showed that preview. I was like, she's definitely going to end up showing up at one of those meet your exes mixers because everything, and I do mean everything that Netflix editors do, is strategic. So them deciding to leave in that part about her saying our story isn't over. I just don't think like our story ends here, but we already knew that that meant that the story wasn't over. So let's bring something full circle. In my video on episodes one and two, I mentioned that it's important that you ask someone how it is that they show up as a partner, how they intend to split responsibilities. And I gave the example of a man wanting a trad wife or a woman wanting to be a trad wife and they never have that conversation with their significant other because they just think it's going to naturally happen and then all of a sudden they found out that they're with someone who either doesn't want a trad wife or doesn't want to be a trad wife and they're like, oh, I thought that that's what you wanted but it's because they never had the conversation. That's kind of a big deal. In episode three, Maria and Tom are talking and they have this exact conversation. I don't mind traditional roles and traditional values. Yeah. I don't mind taking on more of the like the wife role because that, that would just make me feel happy. Like that's what would make me feel good. I don't think I'd want like a, a sort of stay at home wife. It's not really my, my jam at all. When I say like traditional, I've never said I'll stop working. But I'm going to be honest, when I have babies, I'm going to be at home with them for the first year or two and not miss any of the important stuff. I mean, I wouldn't really want to miss that stuff either, but... No, and like, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Dad can still be at home. Now, I happen to be just like Maria. I am happy to take on more of the traditional roles because that makes me happy. I enjoy cooking and cleaning and all of that. Right now, both me and my husband work. But the plan is, once we have kids, I'm going to be a stay-at-home wife. And the reason that I say it's important to talk about this early in a relationship is because we didn't. When we started dating, we were barely 20 and 21. I promise you not many 20 and 21 year olds are having a conversation about, well, how do you see yourself in marriage? Like, what role do you want to take in marriage? Because that's just not the mindset. I want to be able to stay home with our kids until they are at least five, you know, kindergarten age. So that's a huge ask of my husband very late in our relationship to say, by the way, gonna need you to, you know, make enough money to support all of us for at least five years, maybe even more if we don't have kids back to back. That is a very huge ask and I urge y'all to have that conversation early if you're dating someone and it's starting to get serious. It really does matter. And then Maria kind of walked it back. She was like, oh no, the guy could stay home too. Like, I didn't say I wouldn't work. And I don't really think that's what she wanted. I think she did intend to stay at home and not work, but she wanted to be with him in that moment because of all this pressure, the cameras, the pods, this is love is blind. So she said, yeah, sure, I agree with what you're saying. I don't think she actually agrees and that might create issues for them later on. Jasmine and Bobby meet and I'm gonna be honest, I kind of didn't remember who Bobby was. I don't want to say he's forgettable, but maybe he just didn't get a good edit. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Honestly, the less drama that you are involved in on this show, the better. That probably means you are on solid ground. You do not want to become the creator of another bean dip situation. You did say bean dip AD. Oh, oh my God! I'm joking! What the fuck way. Way. <laughs> That's what I said. That said, I do not think that Jasmine is attracted to Bobby. I know that she said she found him attractive, but the body language is just not given that. When they walked up to each other and he looked like he was going in for a kiss, she turned her head. She wasn't really enthusiastic when she said hi to him. And then when he proposed, she got down on his level like he was a toddler and she was about to explain to him why the answer was no. 
And then after a very awkward pause, she said yes. I'm no expert though, so don't listen to me. I'm just saying what I saw. Who knows though, they might end up having the least amount of drama this season. But you want to talk about a good reaction upon first meeting? Freddie and Catherine had that. Freddie definitely did not lie about going to the gym twice a day. I think they are so cute together, but that preview did hint at them possibly having a conversation about prenups or something. I'm not going to say that this is what Catherine should do, but what I'm saying is I wouldn't sign one. Now, it didn't come up in my marriage because me and my husband were both very young and very broke when we got married. If I got married again, I'm definitely not signing a prenup. That's insane to me. I know that that's probably a hot take, but because I do kind of have that more traditional mindset, I think men should be providers. Why would I sign a prenup? It's just not... It's not clicking. It's not clicking. Like, why would you even ask me that? I'm glad that we are out of the pause so we can get on to the actual show. You know, the pods are fun and all that. It's good to see people make connections. But what this show is really about is what happens outside of the pause. So let's get this show going. If you missed my videos on episodes one and two, you can find it on my page in my Love is Blind playlist right at the top. I'll be here next week to discuss episodes five through nine. And until then, I'll see you later. Bye. Ooh, not the millennial coming out. I'm so short. One of these days when I'm taller, I won't have to sit on 20 pillows when I'm recording. Alas, that has not happened yet. So here we are. Okay. Whew. Where is my damn flag at? Sam must have hit it down here. Uh, excuse you, sir. I'm still holding the flag because Sam for our boy Bahia. Bahia? Is that his name? Benaya? Then it's because I know someone named Bahia. That's why I keep saying that. There we go. I said his name right that time. Sorry, but not. Ooh, a package has been shipped. Thank you. Love that. Love getting that. And what's that other girl name? Maria. Traditional woes. Not woes. <laughs> Some would say they are woes. What's that man's name? I don't remember that man's name. Well, I don't need to turn mine because I'm just going to show that clip. I think men should be for. What about say for breeze? Or for brighters? My hands shaking like I need it. I don't know why you got me sinking so low. Yeah.